Now these are your word problems. These are the problems that you dread. Now I'm going to go over a little bit of word problem review because I have to because some of y'all suck at it and some of you are scared to death of word problems so I'll do that right quick. Um, When you're looking at a word problem, there's kind of two things to look for. And the two things you look for are the left side and the right side. And I'm trying to pull up this and it's not coming up. It'll come up eventually. Now there's two sides of an equal sign, the left side and the right side. Well, there's one thing that you need to look for is the total. Now, besides the keywords like sum, greater than, less than, uh, quotient, product, these are just keywords. These are all be on the left hand side because the left hand side is where you build your equation. The right hand side, this is your equal sign, the right hand side is what? The total. So when you're looking at a word problem, if you get the total, you've got half the problem done because you got the right side. The only other side you got to work on is the left side. Now, I'm talking to the students that do not like word problems. There's three types of students. Do not hate word problems, or do not like word problems, and hate word problems. And then there's, I live with them, and then there's the one in the back of the room going, oh, I love word problems. Okay? So most of you fit in the first two categories. So I'm just going over this a little bit. Once you have the right side, then you can focus on the left side. Now the left side is where you build your equation. And usually the unknown, I'm going to make it X. I'm not going to change it to T or Q or anything else. I usually make it X. And you have to go with the keywords. Now, the only thing I want to show you with keywords is this guy right here. When you see less than, now, I'm not talking about any quality. When you see less than and you're working with equal signs, just remember to crisscross. Okay? Because subtraction is not community. So if I give you a word problem and I say that three somewhere in the word problem is less than the unknown. And the total is 14. All right? Then I'm going to write, rewrite this. I'm going to say 3 is less than x. And then I'm going to put equals because is usually is a signifier of what? Equals. That's another key word. And you need to, you need to print out the keywords. They're on Google. Just type in keywords for word problems and hit images. And you'll have bunches of pages at the same time. So you need to print those out if you suck at one problem. All right, equals 14. So here, we figured out the right-hand side. You're halfway done. Now here, you see that less than. Whenever you see a less than, most of the time, with equalities, you crisscross it. And what does less than mean? Subtraction. Now this is something from general math, pre-algebra. I review this with all my algebra, tree, and calculus because I would hate for you to go into a word problem and forget that and write 3 minus x because then you'd get it wrong because 3 minus x is not the same as x minus 3. So remember that. More than it doesn't matter because addition is commutative and you, can't, you don't have to worry about the division because division is going to give you something like divide or quotient. So you're not going to screw that up. Okay? 
So, everybody hopefully got a little bit of a refresher there. So let's go and look at the first example. The first example, that's not it. There we go. And is this one right here? Let's go to the slideshow. Current slide. There we go. I'll write this one down. It says the length of the shadow of a building, 34 meters tall, is 33 blah blah blah. Find the elevation of the sun. Is how like the is, because there's the equal sign. <coughs> Mama didn't film the math class yesterday, did she? Well, I think it's stupid to make people have a test and a paper view. On the day that we know, I think it's stupid. Mark, go ahead and find everything. Find the angles, find the deflection angle. I'm going to talk about the flexion here because some of y'all didn't understand the flexion. So. Really, and all are missing. You've got two angles that are missing and the distance that is missing. Now, why am I asking you to do that? So, piss you off or give you more practice for the test? More practice for the test. So, first of all, I know that is means equals 37.62. Now, what am I going to do with is 32? I'm going to mark it out. Because I don't need it anymore. Fine, leave. The length of the shadow of a building is 39.62. The, the right here is 39 point whatever. So, something of 34.09 meters is equal to 37.62. Well, you can put your theta wherever you want to. But I'm going to put it right here, and when I put my theta right here, that means my little man is standing right here, and what is he? He's got his foot on the Adjacent and the hypotenuse. So I'm not even going to worry about the problem because I don't care what the problem is asking for. But if I fill out everything, what will I have? I'll have the answer no matter what they're asking for. So I'm just going to fill out everything. So I've got the adjacent and I've got the opposite. Hmm. Adjacent and opposite. Oscar had a hump of. What? Apple. So what is of apple? Tangent. So the tangent of theta is going to be equal to, we still have our 37 over there, but what is 37? It's our adjacent, right? So it goes on what? The bottom. And what goes on the top? 34.09. Now, we want theta. So if theta is equal to the inverse tangent, because we divide by tangent on both sides, inverse tangent of 34.09 over 37.62. We'll get out your handy-dandy calculators, 
And give me five, and just give me the hundreds of 42.18. 42.18 what? And that's this guy. So that means what? 42.42? Or 40, what are we? 47.42? 47.82 degrees. Now, this is the deflection angle right here. That's the deflection angle because what you have to think about, if you're standing on this wall and your head is peeking over this wall right here yeah. and you're looking out here, what is your eyeballs doing if you was to go along this line? They go up or down? Down. Deflection. So that angle of deflection is what? 42.18. And of course, we got that degree, got that degree, got that degree. Use the Pythagorean theorem, which is 37.62 squared plus 34.09 squared is equal to C and square root of this number. Somebody give me that number. 50.77. Now, whatever they ask for, you got it. Okay. Uh, find the elevation of the sun. I guess they got 42, 18. I guess that's what they want, which would be your vertical angle. And I'll talk about that in just a second. The vertical angle, let me go to the block real really, really quick. Vertical angle and the deflection angle, are, uh, they're, they're corresponding. In real life, in real world, the transit turns two things. It turns vertical angle and it turns what? Why is it doing this? You can flip from a my slideshow is running. Okay, okay let me go back to slideshow. Okay. Sorry. For those of you going into engineering later. There's two types of angles. Let's say there's a pond right here. And there's a highway right here. And a highway right here. But they don't want this intersection here. They want to make, uh, let's say this road going to exist. And this road dead ends right here. And somebody wants to make a, and come out here, and the surveyor comes out here and shoots the, locates the pond, and then throws in a horizontal angle like this. It's called a horizontal angle. A horizontal angle, if you're standing here and you turn 360 degrees like this, that's a horizontal angle. So usually, Horizontal angles are usually around 360 degrees around the strength of yourself turning around in a circle. All right? And that's all I can say. I can't I can't explain it except the horizontal angle from this point right here to this point right here is probably 50 degrees. And that's that angle right here. 50 degrees. I'm sorry, what? I just guessed. Okay? Because I know 45 is around there. I'm just guessing. Alright, so that's a horizontal angle. It's going around the building. Everybody with me? Now, vertical angle. It's the valley. This valley's still here. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is a hilltop. 
And the reason I have put that is you might think that we're looking down at the pond and the horizontal. And I have to put that to show you that we're looking at the side of the hill. And if your surveyor is down here, the surveyor is down here, he's looking at 90 degrees right here, and he wants to go to the top. He wants to be sheep. This angle, if you look up over the land, it's called a vertical angle. Now, the vertical angle is what you're talking about right now. Okay? If you're on the top of the building, and you're peeking over the building, and you look down at the sidewalk, then your angle from the horizon is called the reflection angle. But, if you're down at the bottom on the sidewalk, and you're looking up to this guy, then your sight from the horizon is not called the deflection angle, it's called the what? The vertical angle. So the vertical angle in this application in this book, if you say a vertical angle to a surveyor or a civil engineer, they're going to think that you're looking on top of the hill. Because okay? that's a vertical angle. All right? If you talk about that, if you talk in academia, then you're looking at the opposite of reflection, okay? which is going to be the same. Often the interior angles are what? So this angle is going to be equal to what? This angle, because these two lines are what? So. That'll help you out when you hear the word vertical angle. If not, then I'm sorry, I wasted your time. And if you look at the answer they got, which you'll just have to tell me if we did it right, because I'm going to have to erase this. Yeah. Okay. Did we get it? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, we're talking about bearings. Good. There are two ways to express a bearing. And that is not the way it's done in academia, because that's called a zenith bearing. You can write that down, though, because you're never going to see it in the book. Zenith bearing. A zenith bearing is always measured from north. Yep, all those are zenith bearings. Usually zenith bearings are between 0 and 360. They were used a long time by surveyors before they came out with the auto lights. They used zenith angle. In other words, everything was turned off of north. And you put your little north arrow, a little north needle on your transit, and you turn to where it was north, and then when you got north, you turned and everything in the colonial days, the Civil War days, Lewis and Clark, all those explorers, they were going by a transit that read off the north, and everything was what? Was zenith bearings. So some of your old flats that were done in the 1800s and 1700s still have the zenith bearing on it. They don't have the regular bearing, which is the four quadrants. That's pretty simple. And it's used on these type problems right here. So write this one down and go ahead and draw a picture of it. Now, if you suck at reading and reading comprehension, then you're going to suck at these problems. Because the answer to set up the problem is in the paragraph, it's in the sentences. So you're going to have to read. So how many guys have got in here? One, two, three, four, five. Y'all are going to suck at this, okay, because you have to read. And what do guys not do? We never read the directions.
How is your history teacher that tells you that I'm stupid? And what teacher was that? Yeah, how is he? He what? Why? Wow, what does he say? I don't do that in here. I don't, I don't say nothing bad about Hillary. I mean, if you want to vote for Hillary, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think people should be told who to vote for. Poor old guy. They call him a racist. And then he goes and speaks to the black church. And then they say he's stupid. He can't win. I thought you had him. You see Hillary's coughing attack. Oh my gosh, she coughed for two minutes on stage. No, she's perfect. Somebody gave me a bumper sticker and I didn't get it in the it. I thought it was funny. There's all, there all kind of funny little sayings about yeah. not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were all over. See, that irritates me. You know why that irritates me? Because it goes against everything that democracy is. Everybody in, in everybody in the United States has a freedom to vote for who they want to. When you start doing stuff like that, I get irritated. When the news, that's why I don't watch TV, because they try to persuade you because you're stupid. America's stupid. You're supposed to listen to us, and you're supposed to vote on who you tell you who to vote for. And I despise that. That's very common. A lot of Bernie, when it comes to trade and economics, a lot of Bernie supporters say that Trump's right. And he is. He, You may not like him, but he's right. We make some of the stupidest trade deals. And that's where our jobs are going. And people say, well, his, his companies are in. Yeah, my companies will be there too. With the regulations that we have in the United States, you can't go to the bathroom without having to consult the union. You think I want to pay somebody $36 an hour when they're only worth $15 an hour? Well, then why do you think those companies are moving to Mexico? That's why. Because these unions that's on the Democratic Party, that support the Democratic Party, they're chiseling away at our, at our economics of industry and business. No, no. In, in America, if you're not a lawyer or an established politician, you can't run for office. And if you do run for office, we're going to crucify you because you're not one of us. That irritates me. That's hard. I know. Let's see what what see that's what everybody's going on. But the media says we can't have that. We can't have somebody up there that knows what they're doing. Don't be sorry. Oh. Squirrel. So, look at this. Radar stations A and B are on the east-west. There's a key word right there. East-west line. East-west line. Now, if y'all don't remember, we, remember we, North? No. So, east-west. Or west of east, which is one more side. And that is with A west of B, 3.7. Okay, so that's done. Draw that line 
And all that's done. Mark that out. You've got that line from A to B. Then it says, Station A detects a plane at C. So we don't know where C is yet, but Station A finds a plane or hits it, or not hits it, but pings on radar. On a bearing, and remember Zenith, Zenith bearing of 61 degrees. So that means from north, you got to go 61 degrees. Now, as of the previous slide, everything is considered senior bearings, unless otherwise specified. How would it be specified? Well, since it does not have, what is this? What, it's, what direction is this? It's north what? It's northeast. If it said north 61 east, then that's not a zenith thing. See what I'm saying? When it incorporates the other three, in the bearing, that's not a zenith angle. Zenith angle is always off north. Therefore, it doesn't have to have this thing. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in the real world, it always means it's off north. That's the way you turn angle to the angle. Okay. So let's do that. Station B. The 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 Now, you could say a negative angle of what? 29 degrees? Did you say that? Yes. As long as it equals 3 what? 360. And now you've got your angle. Okay? So now, Fill in all the fill in all the missing numbers. Now, what I would do first is I would turn this sucker around. Put my 90 degree right there, go over to the side. There's C, and then B is up here, and A is down here. And we know this is 3.7 between A and B. So between A and B, that's what. That's the hypotenuse. And you've got 61 degrees and 29 degrees. You know, this is supposed to be 30 degrees. So that's 29 degrees. And that's 61 degrees. So the only thing you can find is A and what? B. Because there's nothing else to find. Now, why did I do this? I did this. So you'd be able to see what the heck you're looking for. With all this, you may not be able to see it. So do it. Put your little man right here. Put your One of the things about trig, there's no set pattern. You can you can take one thing out of a, a trigonometric equation and you'll have a different problem altogether. So what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to get complacent with just one section. I want you to make sure you can turn it around, you can turn it upside down, and still be able to find the missing data. Some forces on the heart, somebody to do power things, especially when you're a squirrel. So, I've got 
something of my 29 degrees, and we need to better hypotenuse. Oscar had a hump. So I'm going to use my sine and my what? Cosine. So I'm going to do the sine. Sine of theta is equal to Oscar had. So the sine of 29 degrees is equal to Oscar, we don't have. Had is 3.7. So what I do to solve for O? Yes, I multiply both sides by 3.7. Now give me 3.7 times the sine of 29 is equal to O. And somebody tell me what that is. I'm sorry, what? 1.8, that's good enough. So now that we got 1.8, you can use the Pythagorean theorem and say 3.7 squared minus 1.8 squared. You take the square root of that, and that's going to be equal to whatever we're looking for. Okay? So take 3.7 squared minus 1.8 squared and raise it to the 0.5 power. 3.2. And what was I doing while I was writing that? I was going over to make sure it wasn't longer than one. Three point one. Yeah. Make sure it's not bigger than three point seven. Because if you came out with three point eight four, then that means you suck. And you live. There you go. You learn. So how do I get this thing to work? I erase that. What are they doing? Okay. So do we get 3.24? Yes. Now, again, they're using the cosine. You could have done that. These are bearings. These are not zenith bearings. These are bearings. So make sure you know the difference. These are bearings. Northeast, southwest. They either off of north or off of what? South. Now, can they be corresponding? Well, how many of you have had physics before? Can a vector be the same distance and angle, just going in a different direction? Yes. Okay. So an angle can be going in the northwest direction, but be also going in what other direction? Southeast. Okay. You remember doing the unit circle, and you remember going from 45 degrees and going all the way through the center and then going in the third quadrant. That's the same type thinking. All right, so you've got to get used to northeast being southwest, southwest, southeast being northwest. Okay? The first one is the zenith thing. But... The reason it's a zenith angle is because it's off the north. But since it has the east, okay, since it has the east, that means that it's not a zenith angle. It's a regular bearing. Zenith angle, zenith bearing, whatever. But this this east right here tells you that it's a regular bearing. These are the bearings that are on the plat of your property at home. Okay. So if you was to ask your mom and dad or if you have your property of your own, or whatever the case may be, you pull out your plat, your plat would be in the form of meets and bounds. That means an angle and a distance all the way around the property. Now from those angles, you, from those bearings, you can find the angle between the property lines. Let's see if I can do that again. The bearing from A to Z is south 52 degrees east. Well, south 52 degrees east well, there's 45 right here, right? 45 is between, so you're measuring 
right here, south, that would be south 45 degrees east, right? So 45, 57 would be right about right there. And that's what they're telling me. So that's what they're doing right there. And they don't give you a what? They don't give you a distance. The bearing from A to B. Oh, I just I thought they just threw this out. A to B. Okay. The bearing from A to B is 84 northeast. 84 northeast would be almost 90 degrees. It's only six degrees from the 90 degree angle. And that's how you have to learn how to read bearings. And I'm going to be a little bit stringent on this because I think it's important for people to know bearings because when they buy property, they need to understand what the bearings mean. And all of you in here will buy property one day, whether it's in a ditch or whether it's in a condo. Okay? Ditch property is real easy, real easy to buy. Okay? The bearing from B to C is on our retail south 38 what? West. A plane fly, flying, a plane flying at 250 miles per hour takes 2.4 hours to go from A to B. A to B takes a plane 250 miles per hour. 2.4 hours. Distance equals what? Distance equals rate times time. You can figure out the distance. Okay, figure everything out. These will be on the test. I will put a lot of these on the test whenever we have it, which this is 8.4, probably a couple more sections, probably talking about a test in the next week, probably. <laughs> Before I start, I draw me a triangle. I get rid of all that stuff. And I draw me a right triangle. And I just turn it this way a little bit. And I redraw it on a clean sheet. corresponds with angle B over here. And let's see, so this would be A, this would be little A, which in my case, that's going to be A, that's going to be A. The hypotenuse, of course you should realize that Distance equals rate times time. Rate is another word for speed. Don't say that in physics class. That is the uh, physics teacher doing the same time convulsion. But rate and speed are pretty much the same thing. Um, multiply 2.4 by 250, what do you get? You should get 600. We know this angle at A is 44 degrees. Then we know this angle is 46 degrees. And you do that because you know this is what? 180 degrees. And you can subtract to get that angle right there. So here is your triangle. And it looks like we've still got the hypotenuse, and we've got the hypotenuse, that means we're going to be using the what? Sine or the cosine, whatever that one is. What was it? Okay, no more. So I'm really more. Okay, so sine of 44 is equal to Oscar had. So that's 
So Oscar is equal to 600 times sine of 44. Somebody give me that, the, the hundreds, please. 0 0.80. So Oscar is 416 feet. 0.8, really 417 feet, please. Almost no good. Another thing. What do surveyors and civil engineers measure feet in? Inches or tenths? Huh? Tenths. Why? It's easier to do in your head. That's something, that's a bit of trivia that you might want to write down. Huh? There's ten tens and a hundred a foot. So an inch is almost a little bit smaller than a tenth. So when you look at a when you look at a surveyor's chain, the last section of the chain, which is your reading section, is the smart end, not the dummy end. And I've got to explain dummy end to go on. Is broken up into ten, where your ruler is broken up into twelve, it's broken up into ten. So you don't have to do the three fourths and the one half and all that bullcrap. A tenth. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths. And in between that is hundreds. So it's a whole lot easier. But always remember that when you when you look at your flat, when you buy a piece of property, and it says 416.8 feet, that's not eight inches, it's eight tenths. Which is a little bit more it's close to where you'd have to do 8 is to 10 as x is to 12. You'd have to do that conversion. Y'all can't see that I'm in my element, can you? This is what I've been doing since I was 8 years old. Alright? So, anyways, I, I just cut bushes when I was 8 years old. Um, so now I've got 416. So somebody give me A. 431.6. So what I get y'all to do, go home and get a copy of your plat and make it a project. Half your parents wouldn't even know where their plats are. <laughs> Believe you me, I know. What is this? Is this the actual problem doing it? Did we get it right? What do you mean, someone? Let's see what the direction says. Okay, they they look like they're rounding to the nearest. Doesn't say, but the old adage is: if you start with this, you end with this. If you start with a mixed number, you end with a mixed number. If you start with a non-decimal, you end with a what? non-decimal. So what was our distance from A to C decimal-wise? So they so they rounded it down. I don't know why. Yeah. Did y'all do 600 sine of 46? Yeah. But why did they go down? There's nothing that says go to the nearest. Okay. I'll take either answer, but I wouldn't take 430. I mean, that's ridiculous. You also see parallax in a in a, a theodolite. And you're looking through the the auto light, the parallax is when you go right beside a tree, you think you're passing the tree, but you're actually hitting the tree. And it all has to do with the parallax of, and also heat waves and things like that. That's what they're talking about here. Um, so there, there's a conversion factor there. I don't think that's important. Nope. This is important. 
because this is a standardized test question, ACT and SAT, right here. Look at it and see if you can figure it out. I'm not going to give you any help on it. I'm going to see if you can figure it out. And if you can't, then that means you can fill out a drop slip at the class. He actually was working in Park Bowl yesterday and he had this, he has a pump door and it's slicked back and he was wearing his skinny jeans. Interesting four words to use. Whenever you hear the word interesting, unique, special, there's always a but behind it. Y'all ready to quit? No, I'm just not ready. Francisco needs to know the height of a tree from a given point. And this is actually applicable. This is what, uh, what do you call them people? Not forest rangers, they're called uh, forestry. Forestry people, I don't know what they're called. They might be called forest rangers, I don't know. But they actually calculate, huh? No, forestry. No, these people go out and they calculate pulpwood. They find 10 or 15 trees, they measure them, and then they average that, and then they tell you how much wood you have and how much it's worth. Because contrary to popular belief, wood is sold just like green beans. Uh, you, you have so many trees, you get so many thousand dollars for those trees. And either it's cut up into paper and pulpwood, or it's cut into lumber for loads of whoever. Okay? So when I get this one on the ground, he finds that at the angle, blah, 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 blah. He then moves back what? 50 feet. And that's your, you got to have that. If you don't have that 50 feet, you might as well just say can't do the problem. Blah, blah, blah. So what's the total distance on the bottom of that triangle? From D to C. Okay. And then right after you put I don't know, you put equals I quit. Okay. I don't know equals I quit. All right. I'm going to ask it again because I have faith in y'all. Some of you. What is the distance from D to C? Thank 
телеканале. Слава Богу. Mm. Considering you don't have a distance on there, I want to know how you got it without a distance. Tangent point two, point two. Is that what the opposite? Okay, we'll see you get there. Wait, go, to the next go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. You can't do that. You can't do that. Yes, you can. The tangent, you don't have a distance here, and you don't have a distance. Go back over there. This, tri oh, this triangle. So you're just going to the opposite. <laughs> Sucks. Go back. Maybe you need to decide that. Okay. Go back. <laughs> Come on. The triangle is only if the right book. Look, this is the don't triangle. Don't touch it. A, A, D, and B. A, D, B. It's not this? 90 degrees. Oh, okay. Go sit your butt down and don't ever come up to my board again. It has to be 90 degrees. Yeah. Right. You now, you still want to go with your answer? No. <laughs> okay, as I was saying, <laughs> the bottom of your triangle is. Oh, I can write on this. The bottom is V plus. Or 50 plus x. So I've got a triangle with an angle of 22.2 degrees with a 50 plus x bottom and an h over here. And then I have another triangle with x here and 36.7 degrees. And the H here. Now, you're right about one thing. You are going to use tangent because you have the opposite and the adjacent. So, 20% of your answer was correct. The tangent is what you're going to use. So, you could say the tangent of 22.2 degrees is equal to Oscar had a hump of apple 50 plus x. And then of course you could set this one up and say tangent of 36.7 degrees is equal to Oscar had a hump of apple h over x. Hmm. Two equations, how I many unknowns? You can solve. If you solve for the same variable, you can set them equal to each other. And you feel good about yourself. Unless you tried to answer it with some fuck out scheme. Okay. Don't laugh, and maybe you won't need it. <laughs> what? What? I don't know. I don't know this guy. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by 50 plus x here. And multiply both sides by x here, and that leaves me with h is equal to this, and h is equal to this, so now I can set them equal to each other. And that's going to be, I'm just going to write tangent of 22.2 degrees times 50 plus x is equal to the tangent of 36.7 degrees times x. That X is a concrete block. You need to bust it up. You bust it up with the what law? Oh, what time is it? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Y'all were supposed to tell me to quit reporting. Awesome. 50 plus X. Yeah, you need to quit reporting. Yeah, I'm 
tangent of 22.2 degrees plus tangent 22.2x is equal to tangent x times tangent of 36.7. And then it's a rate by alpha problem. This is a number. So 2 plus 3x is equal to 4x. And then we can just finish it. We'll finish it when, uh, whenever y'all come back. I got to get out of here because they're going to start beating down the door. Okay, keep working on. 8.3, we'll move into 8.5 and 8.6 when y'all come back after I.